Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Doc here, and today I thought it might be interesting for a quick unscripted video to talk about some of the local solar systems to our own star, and how they have appeared and been used in various works of popular science fiction. So let's get right into it. At a distance of 4.37 light years, or 1.34 parsecs from the Sun, Alpha Centauri is the closest solar system to our own, and as a result it appears very often in different works of science fiction. The system consists of three stars, two of which form a binary star called Alpha Centauri AB, and the third is a red dwarf called Proxima Centauri that orbits at a distance of about 13,000 AU from the Lagrange point between the binary stars. In Babylon 5 we see this system as one of the most important colonies of the Earth Alliance, with uh, Proxima 3 being a habitable planet around the red dwarf Proxima Centauri that ultimately becomes one of the colonies to rebel against President Clark in Season 3. Uh, we also see this system in James Cameron's Avatar, where it serves as the location of the gas giant Polyphemus and the fictional moon Pandora, which orbits it. In the Kill Zone series, which I'm afraid I've not actually played, the system apparently hosts the planets Vector and Helgan, which are important to the story and seem to provide the main setting for most of the series. We also hear about the system in Mass Effect as a place that Earth apparently launched a sublight expedition to in 2070 prior to the discovery of the Karen Relay, but lost contact with them soon afterwards, only for the Asari to ultimately find their descendants having built an independent colony there. The Tau Ceti system is just under 12 light years away from Sol, that's 3.7 parsecs, and is constructed around a single G-type yellow dwarf star, much like our own Sun. Interestingly, the term yellow dwarf is pretty much completely imprecise. It's used to refer to main sequence stars that are not dwarf stars, but that's just the way the terminology goes. This system is mentioned a couple of times in Star Trek as the home port of the USS Kobayashi Maru during the simulation in Star Trek The Wrath of Khan, and also as the site of the Tau Ceti Accords, between the Vulcans and Andorians somewhere prior to 2151, which we see the Andorians violating in the episode The Andorian Incident when they set up a listening station beneath the ancient Pajem Monastery. And we also see the system in the first mission of Star Trek Bridge Commander where you're at a Federation dry dock but it's inaccurately represented by a blue-white star rather than a yellow dwarf. Tau Ceti V also plays a crucial role in the fantastic and critically acclaimed game System Shock 2 as the place where the Von Braun and her escort ship the Rickenbacker respond to a stress call and encounter the many, the uh, biological hive mind created by Shodan that kicks off the plot of the game. And finally, my favourite use of the Tau Ceti system is as the destination of the LDSS Nauvoo in The Expanse, both in Leviathan Wakes and in the show. The original destination to which the Mormon colony ship was going to travel across hundreds of years before it was ignominiously stolen by the OPA and used as a torpedo. And not even a torpedo that hit anything. But those of you who've read the books will know that there's some pretty awesome stuff coming up in the show in involving that ship. Epsilon Eridani is a K-type star, slightly smaller and cooler than our Sun, at a distance of 10.5 light years. This system is hugely important in two big sci-fi franchises, Babylon 5 and Halo. In Halo, it's the location of Reach, the massively important UNSC stronghold that serves as one of the most pivotal locations in the plot, and in Babylon 5, it is the location of Babylon 5 herself, the, uh, the station built as a point of connection for all sentient races in the area. Also, the location of the Great Machine, an ancient piece of technology left by Forerunner races on the surface of the planet around which Babylon 5 orbits. The Star Trek Star Charts book also puts Epsilon Eridani as the location of the planet Axanar, which was the site of the pivotal concluding battle of the Four Years' War with the Klingons. Honestly, I'm not sure if any of that is even close to canon or even semi-canon anymore now that Discovery has done its own Klingon war that's about different things and seems to take place at a slightly different time. But either way, the planet is mentioned in TOS and has an important part in Trek history. Arcturus is a 7 billion year old red giant, 36.7 light years from our solar system. If any of you are fans of DC Comics, you might be interested to know that Arcturus is the star around which Krypton orbits, though not for very long. The star also appears in the recent film Passengers, where it's used as part of a gravity sling, and my favourite use of this star system in science fiction is in Mass Effect, where it serves as the location of the capital of the system's alliance, uh, Arcturus Station. Though Vancouver is the capital of 
Earth, Arcturus Station is used as a platform from which to run the Systems Alliance, largely because it's around the point where the Charon Relay in the Sol system emerges and serves as a hub for mass relays for all of the systems in Alliance space. The idea of using a space station as a capital is a really cool idea. It allows you to have a contingency plan if the home world is ever suddenly attacked, you can continue to operate your nation. I think it's kind of a shame we never actually got to go to Arcturus Station in any of the Mass Effect games, that would have been really interesting. Wolf 359 is a red dwarf at the centre of the fourth closest star system to Earth. This one's on the list less because of the number of things it appears in, and more because of the enormous significance it has in one particular franchise, that being Star Trek. The system was of course the site of the second encounter with the Borg by the United Federation of Planets, known as the Battle of Wolf 359, and regarded as one of the greatest tragedies in the history of the Federation. The battle saw the death or assimilation of over 11,000 people, and the destruction of a huge percentage of the Federation's Starfleet, as well as numerous Klingon Defence Force vessels. The effects of the battle go far beyond its ending, and serve as important character motivations for characters like Benjamin Sisko, Jean-Luc Picard, and Seven of Nine. Though the system does play a role in various other science fiction works, the one I'd like to mention is from the first free space game, Descent the Great War, where the system is a place that the player character is sent to as a punishment for failing a mission to perform menial patrol tasks until they're reassigned to the front lines. Now this list was only five examples, I'm well aware that there are plenty of other star systems near our solar system that have appeared dozens and dozens of times in different science fiction works, Procyon, Polaris, Betelgeuse, Sirius, Vega. So if you have any other cool examples, please do leave them in the comments below, I'd love to read them. This is Daniel from Space Doc, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Doc schedule to see what's coming up.